Kenya is home to a host of many colored stones such as savorite, red garnet, ruby, sapphires, aquamarine, amethyst and tourmalines. The beautiful gems are used to make jewelry and other adornments. In some parts of the world, the colored stones are used as religious symbols and for spiritual practices that include meditation and to restore energy. Gemstones have been used to display wealth, status and power. Gemstones have been mined in Kenya for many years. Sapphires were first discovered in the 1930s in Kinyiki Hills in the eastern region. The Savorite was discovered in 1970 in the Savo National Park in Taita Taveta in the southeast region of Kenya. The gemstone was named by Tiffany and Company Jewelry Company in honor of the Savo National Park, which is one of the largest game reserves in the world. The Taita Taveta County is home to Savo East and Savo West National Parks, which cover 62% of the county's landmass and extend to about 17,084 kilometers squared. Over the years, gemstones deposits have been discovered in other regions of Kenya, like Nyambene and Taraka in the eastern region and Baringo and West Pokot in the Rift Valley. The gemstone deposits are located within Mozambique Oregonic Belt, which bisects Kenya in a north-south direction. Although precious and semi-precious stones are found in different parts of Kenya, Taita Taveta County remains the largest producer of gemstones in the country. This gemstone-producing county is located in the southwestern part of Kenya's coastal region. It's about 340 kilometers southeast of the capital city Nairobi and about 100 kilometers from the Tanzanian border at Taveta. It is estimated that Taita Taveta County has over 500 gemstone mine sites which produce a variety of high and middle value gemstones. Here in Taita Taveta, we are very rich in uh, gemstones, some of which are green garnet or what we call the savorite. We have rubies, we have sapphires, we have rhodorites and so many other types of gemstones. And uh, some of the processes which are being used down there to mine are open cast and also uh, underground or shallow underground tunnels. The mining of these high and middle value gemstones in Taita Taveta County primarily occurs in diverse topography, mostly in the arid and semi arid parts of the county. The expansive mining regions include Mkuki, Chungaunga, Kamtonga, Mgama. Lualeni, Alia, Chawia, Mwachabo, Sangeni, Kishushe, Kasigao, Mgeno, Mangare, Mgongoni, and Kuranze. Mining operations in Taita Taveta County occur at three levels artisanal, small scale, and large scale mining. Currently, there are only two large scale gemstone mines in the county. Rockland Kenya Limited, a ruby mine in Mangare area of Savo West National Park, and Bridges Exploration International Limited, a Savorite mine in Mwatate. These two have formed community development agreement committees in accordance with the Mining Act of 2016. Likewise, there are 162 small-scale mines in the county, covering a total area of 72.6491 square kilometers. The number of artisanal miners is largely unknown, although their numbers are much higher than those of small-scale mines. It is believed that artisanal and small-scale mining contribute up to 60% of the annual gemstone production in the county. The artisanal miners were only recently recognized as a legal category of the Mining and Minerals Policy of 2016. The artisanal and small-scale miners organize themselves into community-based organizations, cooperatives, and others are private limited companies. The licensed mining organizations own the mineral rights and are accountable to the government. Since 2016, the qualification and verification of the miners is an ongoing process. Once completed, it will help in the licensing of artisanal miners and ultimately distinguish and separate the genuine small-scale miners from speculating small-scale mineral right holders. The Mining Act 2016 
na zurura katika taifa letu la Kenya na kulingana sheria vile ilikuwa hakuwa anaweza kutambulika na ilikuwa ni vigumu sana kwake lakini sasa hii katiba imetutambua imetupa uwezo pia nashukuru maana tumehamasishwa vya kutosha kuhusu katiba kwa hivyo tunasema kwamba waliofanya hivyo hakika serikali imefanya vizuri kutambua wachimbaji wadogo wadogo na ambapo hapo pia katika huo upande unaona vijana tayari washainukia kwa hii kazi maana wametambulikana wamejiunga kwa vikundi The artisanal and small scale mining sector is one of the most indispensable rural activity with significant positive social and economic impact in this resource rich county of Taita Taveta the mining industry in Taita Taveta is one of the major economic activities in the county offering employment and income to hundreds of locals who live around gemstone rich areas According to the Mining Act number no. 12 of 2016, the provisions to grant artisanal mining permits to only Kenyan citizens who have attained the age of 18 years has opened doors for many mines to be opened, which is a source of employment for the locals. Although the number of gemstone miners in Taita Taveta is not properly documented, a pact UK and Alliance for Responsible Mining report notes about 10,000 ASM miners with half employed by companies and paid on a production share basis that varies between 20 to 30 percent of the extracted gemstones. Due to its labor intensiveness, artisanal mining enables thousands of men and women to find work in the mining fields. Many young people begin to mine as soon as they reach 18 years. There is also a perception that mining is a more economically rewarding activity compared to many other jobs in the agricultural sector or in the public service. Others joined the ASM driven by the inability to find alternative work that can meet their immediate basic needs. The sector continues to attract huge labor interest due to the low economic and education status of individuals in the community. Poverty is rife in mining areas, and therefore informal gemstone mining becomes a deliberate production strategy to optimize their chances of moving out of dire poverty. The mining and processing of gemstones is a multi-million dollar industry in Kenya. It has a great potential to contribute to the socio-economic development of Taita Taveta County and to the national economy in general. According to the Government of Kenya Statistics, in 2018, the gemstone exports accounted for about 5 million US dollars, which is equivalent to 500 million Kenya shillings. The rough gemstones were about 508,815.37 kilograms with a gross sales value of about 4 million US dollars and the cut gemstones were 14,500.35 carats with a gross sales value of about 1 million US dollars. Since 2013, gemstone sales have accounted for 30 million US dollars, which is 3 billion Kenya shillings. However, these figures may not capture the sales from artisanal gemstones which make it to the export market in rough form and mostly through informal channels. The resources from gemstones mining have led to a rapid growth of local towns and shopping centers and also expansion of auxiliary local businesses and of roads. A good number of ASMs have been able to sustain their livelihoods. Income from gemstone mining helps meet the basic need like food, healthcare, clothing and education for their immediate and extended families. Hii ilipoanza kuchimba madini wana kijiji walikuwa ni wachache lakini kutokana na ule uingizi wa wingi wa watu waliokuja kuchimba madini basi watu walianza kupata madini na ikawa kuna mahitaji ya wachimbaji madini. Na kwa sababu hiyo ikabidi tena wenyeji sasa waanze kufanya biashara, waanze kufanya ukulima, kuzidisha ukulima kwa maana watu walikuwa hapa na wanahitaji wana chakula na haya madini yanatufaidi kwa sababu wanapopata madini yao na kuuza chakula wanapata hapa hapa kijijini mahitaji yao yote ya mwili wanapata hapa hapa kijijini na hata katika maji watu wakaanza biashara pia ya maji ya vibanda ya mahoteli na hata pia biashara za mabazi kafunguliwa na kutokana na mauzo haya na mapato hayo tukaanza pia kuwa na kuweza kuweza kununua sola maana tulikuwa hatuna hizo vitu lakini sasa karibu kila nyumba ina sola usiku ukija ni mchana ni kama mchana maana kila mtu amefaidika na pia tumeona barabara zimeendelea kuilia kwa sababu wanunuzi wanaposikia madini yametoboka wanunuzi ni wengi na magari ni mengi kwa hivyo usafiri pia hapa kidogo tunaona tumepata nafuu ya usafiri
Naona hayo ndio mambo ambayo yametukumba kwa ajili ya e, madini haya lakini tunapenda kwamba tuone madini yameongezeka na hata sisi wenyewe wanaichi, kuna wananchi ambao wenyeji wa hapa pia wameingilia kuchimbaji wa madini na nyumba zimeanza kubadilika sio vile popo tulikuja kama mashambani kama vibanda lakini tumeanza kujenga nyumba za kudumu yani permanent houses kwa ajili ya kupata fedha kama hizo Mining has improved the living conditions and general well-being of mining families in Taita Taveta. Although gender inequality is pervasive in the ASM sector, women are increasingly joining the mining industry. According to the 2018 PACT report, women account for 15% of the ASM workforce in the county. Women are more likely to participate in less direct labor-intensive activities like sieving, sorting, digging shallow trenches and clearing the topsoil. Women also engage in indirect mining activities, providing services like cooking, cleaning and hauling water within the mines. With the exception of family-owned businesses, very few women are involved in the management and decision-making and governance of most community-based mines and cooperatives. Women in leadership are expected to be of higher moral standing compared to men. Kulingana na mimi, maisha yangu mahali nilikuwa, si vile niko kwa sasa. Kwa sababu, mahali nilitoka kulikuwa nafanya kazi ya ukulima na ilikuwa haina mapato lakini kulingana na vile nilikuja kwa madini yale mapato kidogo nilipata niliweza kujiendeleza nilipata karo watoto wakaenda shule tukasaidiana mali tulisaidiana nilikuwa na nyumba labda ni kibanda nilijenga so yule mtu ambaye aliniona mbeleni miaka miwili iliyopita na huyu ambaye akienda akirudi akija akiangalia ile miaka miwili anaona kuna changes so anaweza jiunga na mimi lakini awe mvumilivu Kwa sababu madini, iko na changamoto. Although women have benefited from mining, women face unique challenges working in hazardous conditions in mining. The working conditions, the requirements for production of work, the remoteness of mining sites and conditions in the mining camps are some of the barriers women face in mining. Mimi kama mama, nimeacha nyumba, nimekuja huku. So... Sisi wale kina mama ambao tuko hapa huwa tunaambiwa tumekuja kutembea yani tumekuja kufanya ukahaba juu kama hii si bio nzima kuna zaidi ya watu elfu tatu. na sisi kina mama ni watano peke yake so mtu tu kwa mawazo yake anazafikiria hawa kina mama watano wanaezaje kuishi na hawa wanaume wote hapo lakini sisi tumekaa kama brother and sisters so hata tukikaa kuna yale matani tu lakini hakuna kile kitu wa tunaendelea kufanya. Sisi tunajua tumekuja kwa madini, then unachimba madini, kile chako umepata, upeleke nyumbani, ufanyie kile umekusudia kufanya. Lakini kina mama wengi wale ambao wako nje, sisi huwa tunasomeka kama makahaba wale ambao tuko migodini hapa. Kwa sababu mama kuacha nyumba kuanzia Jumatatu paka Jumamosi ndo urudi nyumbani, inakuwa ni ngumu kwa mama mwingine kukuelewa. Lakini mimi kama mama na ninajua jukumu langu kama mama na nimeacha nyumba yangu nimekuja kwa madini then ninafanya ile kazi imenileta nikirudi huko Sisi wa mama hapa tuko na challenge ya, ya kambi Kwa sasa hizi kambi zetu haziko in good condition kwa sisi wa mama so ndio maana tuwezi kukaa kwa sababu security yetu haiko kwa sana pia mambo ya privacy kama mama anafaa kukoa kwa kambi yenye iko decent at least pia iko na security na tukiangalia hizi e, kambi zetu haziwezi kutuweka sisi wa mama so tunahitaji kama we support ndio tuweze kufanya hii uchimbaji vizuri tuweze kukaa hapa comfortable tukiwa na kambi nzuri tukiangalia watoto wetu like my children wanaweza nikosa kuniona for a week kwa sababu niko hapa ni mbali sana na nyumbani na hiyo transport ya kukuja hapa ni, ni pesa mingi so siwezi kuja leo nikarudi leo nitakuja kuspend hapa so kuna hiyo uhusiano wangu na familia siko nao karibu so my children sometimes wanaweza kuwa affected even my husband anaweza kuwa affected kwa sababu atanikosa for that week na labda ninaenda during the weekend peke yake na ninarudi the other week niko kazini pia huku so hiyo pia ina affect familia and even the watoto 
alafu pia tukiangalia mambo ya 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 hao wengine wa kufaida azim nikikuja ma, nikifanya kazi nikipata ile mapato ninapata ni naona watoto wangu wanafaidika azim kuna can pay for my school my children school fees naweza taftia watoto wangu chakula na mavazi alafu pia nikipata pesa huku pia my neighbors ama majirani zangu wanafaidika kwa sababu wale wanafanya biashara nitanunua kutoka kwao so they are benefiting from hii kazi ya ya, ya uchimbaji Despite these challenges, women miners are very enterprising and development minded. When faced with no mining production, many of them will take on other jobs like weaving and basketry to finance their mining activities or supplement mining income to fend for their families. The women miners continue to lobby for a more equitable mining sector in Taita Taveta and work closely with the Taita Taveta University and the Association for Women in Extractives and Energy in Kenya to support their training, especially to enhance their technical, financial management and marketing literacy. The gemstone artisanal and small-scale mining value chain is complex and multifaceted, with different upstream and downstream actors. The upstream actors are involved in gemstone production and processing, whilst the downstream actors are market intermediaries, exporters and retailers. Hapa tuko, tunafanya prospecting, na hapa tunachimba kwa trench, tuki, tukiangalia traces za mawe pale ziko. So tukichimba, tunaweka kwa sieve, tuna sieve, tunachua mchanga hii ya juu, na tunabaki na changarawe nye tunamwaga hapa. Tukimwaga hii changarawe hapa tuna sort ku sort tunaangalia kama kuna traces za madini Gemstone prospecting and production are important activities in the upstream value chain processes Many artisanal miners do not own the land they mine They often enter into special arrangements with landowners who own pieces of land or ranches Many pit owners or sponsors finance gemstone extraction Many artisanal miners rely heavily on indigenous knowledge during prospecting and exploitation of gemstones. The main indicator of the presence of mineralization is alluvial deposits on the surface, which means the miners first dig up before they advance underground. It is very rare to find alluvial gemstones today as most of the deposits have been exhausted following many years of extraction. The alluvial deposits are quite attractive not only because the cost of extraction from the hard rock is avoided, but also because the crystals are not affected by cracking from blasting of the hard host rocks by explosives. The prospecting and extraction processes, unlike in the large-scale mining case, occur simultaneously due to lack of capital and modern technology for locating and determination of both the quality and quantity of minerals. The extraction is manual or semi-mechanized using jackhammers and blasting with explosives. The artisanal miners rely on traditional and basic rudimentary mining methods and basic tools such as mallets, chisels, shovels, picks and buckets during the gem prospecting and extraction. Comparatively, the small-scale miners often use mechanization, although not as sophisticated as in the large-scale miners. Very few artisanal miners use timbering to stabilize underground workings with some sites leaving pillars in situ. The rate of gemstone production varies greatly depending on the equipment used, the number of workers, and active tunnels and hardness of the rock. The gemstone's extraction requires patience as successful production happens when a gemstone pouch or pocket is reached. The miners might dig approximately 2 meters per day when they are solely relying on jackhammers. However, if blasting, they advance tunnels at approximately 5 to 7 meters per blast. Blasting has negative impacts. At times, the miners illegally acquire explosives and use it without having proper knowledge and training in their use, leading to injury to themselves and to other unconcerned people when they mishandle the explosives or when the blast causes fly rock. Changamoto kubwa kwa madini haya ni kwamba wakati wanachimba madini haya na wana blast, wana kijiji bado hawajapata kufahamu ile hatari ambapo mlipuko inapolion. 
na hawajakuwa na mpangilio kamili ambao ya kuweka kwamba wakati wa waku, waku, waku ili wana, wana kijiji wawe kando maana kuni wanapata hapa walisha mifugo ni hapa hapa wanalisha mifugo na pia yale mashimo ambao wanachimba unakuta mbuzi au kondoa au ngombe anaangukia huko ndani mtu akifika nyumbani anakuta mmoja hakuna lakini akirudi pingine ndio utakuja kutafuta upate mmoja ameshakufa upate mwingine ameoza hizo ndio changamoto zimeletwa na watu wa madini lakini kwa sababu ya maendeleo pia e, tunaomba ni kwamba wapate kuwa kufundishwa na kuelimishwa ili wakichimba wafinike ili kwa sababu ya hatari kama hizo mada wao hawafahamu lakini sisi wananchi ndio tutafahamu kuhusu changamoto ya vilipuzi tungependa kwamba wafahamishwe usalama manake hiyo vilipuzi vinarusha mawe hii miamba inayopatuliwa na hiyo miamba pingine inaweza kuta mtu akiwa akiwa katika pori ya kichunga wala akichukua kuni na ikamwadhiri kwa hivyo tungependa pia wapate hawa mafundisho na wajue na hata serikali pia iweze kuwa kwamba ina, inaangalia mambo hayo zaidi kwa sababu uh, hapa ni kama tuku tuku porini na wao wanaona kama hawako porini lakini hawajaelewa ule umuhimu wa mwananchi kuwa mali hapa The gemstones we greatly treasure and admire come from various depths and locations in the earth's crust artisanal and small scale miners are engaged in precarious work and have no access to any form of social protection Incidences of occupational health and safety accidents and losses in ASM are likely to be higher than in large-scale mining given the nature of mining work and use of mining equipment. Unfortunately, the monitoring and enforcement of safety legislation in ASM is weak. The excavation and extraction of the gemstones involves heavy physical exertion which contributes to the miners poor health, social and economic well-being. The deep underground channels are hazardous. They are dark with inadequate ventilation. Many ASM do not have reinforcing structures to hold the roofs. Miners work in small teams of 3 to 8 people in a given site. Miners may each have their own pit adjacent to the other with very small spacing between them. As they progress underground, the pits may converge into the neighbor's pit and cause collapse of the pit on its own or through blasting with explosives. Often, the artisanal miners cannot afford the personal protective equipment and gear. They work without goggles, gloves, dust masks, boots, helmets or even overalls and are therefore exposed to environmental occupational health and safety risks the use of pneumatic rock drills in small scale mines expose the miners to high levels of noise and vibration due to their close proximity to the drills and the enclosed environment within which they work gemstone mining has profound negative impacts on the environment Like in most parts of the world, artisanal mining in Taita Taveta is mostly done without compliance to industry standards and environmental regulation. Miners cut indigenous trees and clear bushes to pave way for mining sites. The removal of topsoil, which might not be reused, leads to soil erosion during the rainy seasons. As the pits get too deep or miners lose track of the reefs they are following, they abandon the pits and move to a new pit. The abandoned mine pits, tunnels and trenches are hazardous to both animals and humans and are dangerous breeding grounds for mosquitoes and hiding caveats for animals and criminals. Many miners are not aware of laws and basic safety standards and those that might know the industry expectations simply ignore them due to the high compliance costs, the lack of finance and access to safety equipment. Usaidizi ule tunaweza pata sisi kama wana CBO hasa tunahitaji vifaa vya kisasa vya vya uchimbaji. Njue kama hii rundo inahitaji kuondolewa. Tunahitaji excavator na tipa. Iondoe hii rundo iende mbali kama barabara zimeharibika then inaweza tengeneza badili ya kuwa wastage hapa mahali vile imekaa. Kuna huu mchanga hii top soil ambayo iko hapa. Inaweza saidia vijana kule mashinani wafetue matofali. A few mines are taking environmental issues seriously. However, these are very few and more efforts are needed towards mining environmental rehabilitation in the county. Ukiangalia area yote tumejaribu kutembea, unaweza fikiri hiyo ardhi ilikuwa hivyo. Lakini sisi tumehakikisha ile mashimo tumefunika tuka level kabisa. Ndio unaweza ukaona nyasi zimemea mzuri. Na miti pia ile tumepanda inaendelea vizuri. 
Kenya exports most rough gemstones. Only a small portion of Kenya's gemstone production is locally cut before it is exported. Most of the cutting and polishing of gemstones is done in Nairobi or Mombasa. The cutting and polishing of gemstones is a nascent business in Kenya. Cutting and polishing is a technical process of value addition that requires specialized skills and equipment which the artisanal and small-scale miners lack. Before a gemstone's value is very much comes from its beauty. Um, at the end of the day, it's just a stone. Um, it has to be beautiful to be valuable. So cutting is paramount. Um, the cutting is what, what releases the sparkle, the fire of the stone, the beauty, the, the color. Um, what often happens in Kenya is we have a very nascent cutting uh, market here. We have a few cutters who tend to cut for um, independent miners and they're, ba they're paid based on weight. So they tend to, to want to cut the heaviest stone they can because that allows them, that gives them more pay. Unfortunately, cutting for weight often means that you sacrifice beauty because those angles that are used are not the best angles to create the fire and beauty of the gem. Gemstones are cut in order to remove flawed material and to bring out their brilliance emanating from the light refracted through them and reflected off the bottom facets back into the eyes of the person observing the gem. The cut depends on the grade of the gemstone. Low-grade rough gemstones can simply be tumbled inside a rotating barrel to which abrasive materials is added to give them a shiny polish. The resulting rounded gemstone beads are then made into necklaces or other forms of jewelry. The next higher grade of gemstones, but which do not qualify for gem grade, can be cut into smooth dome-shaped stones called cabocons. This is a cut in which the gemstone piece is cut with a flat bottom and a dome-shaped top. They are mounted onto jewelry. To get maximum benefit from a gemstone of high-grade quality, it is necessary to use the cutting style known as faceting. The high-grade gemstones are cut using a faceting machine. The surface of the gem is made of several geometrically arranged flat surfaces, each called a facet. The facets are cut at proper angles to capitalize on the optical properties of the gemstones to bring out its brilliance. The complexity of faceting and other preparatory steps prohibit involvement of artisanal miners and indeed ordinary gemstone dealers from being involved in gem cutting. Besides, the cost of a faceting machine is also prohibitive to ASM. Artisanal miners process their gemstones by screening or sieving the ore, separating and sorting the gems by hand, washing of the colored stones with water and shining them with glycerin. There are no hazardous chemicals used in this process. The gemstone processing infrastructure is in its infancy in Taita Taveta County. The inadequate gemstone processing knowledge and the limited infrastructure in the county results in miners disposing of their stones to the nearby brokers normally at throwaway price in order to keep operations running. However, this might change once the recently established Void Gemstone and Value Addition Center is fully operational. Taita Taveta University, Kenya's University of Mining located in Voi, has been training the artisanal and small-scale miners on gemstone prospecting, mining, gemology, gem cutting and polishing, and marketing since 2011. With the establishment of the Voi Gemstone and Value Addition Center, the training on gem cutting and polishing will shift to the center. Even though the university staff will still be training and building the eternal capacity of the staff at the GEM Center. Prior to 2000, Kenya has developed a strong gemstone dealers market in Nairobi, but many dealers and cutters later moved to Tanzania where the cutting industry had become more developed and organized. Over the years, a big hindrance to local gem cutting has been the refusal by the big international buyers to accept locally cut gems, alleging that the quality of the cut does not measure to their market demands. Trading of gemstones in Kenya is complex, with different types of trades occurring among and between downstream value chain actors who include both local and international mine site buyers, brokers, traders, gem cutters, dealers and retailers. 
the marketing of gemstones can be challenging and the process for exporting gemstones is cumbersome and complex. The valuation of gemstones is based on four critical parameters, color, clarity, cut and carrot. And this requires special skills and experience that ASM might not have. Paramount to gemstone valuation is, I would say, is knowledge, education and experience. You have to really understand gemstones in order to be able to accurately value them because there are so many factors inherent in them. But basically, it comes down to the four C's, which is basically colour, clarity, carat weight and cut. Colour with coloured gems is the highest value factor. Obviously, that's what coloured gems are all about. And you need to be able to understand which are the top colours in any particular gem variety. For example, with ruby you have the classic pigeon's blood red, which comes from Burma and now from Mozambique, which is a pure red, no modifier, uh, and is highly coveted. That commands a very premium price over, for example, the brownie reds that you might find somewhere in Thailand, Vietnam. So the same goes with sarvarites, tanzanites, aquamarines, Colour is paramount. Next comes clarity, how clean that gem is. Does it have flaws in it, cracks? These uh, impact the quality of that gemstone heavily. Following that, obviously, is, is carat weight. How big a stone will cut? So from a piece of rough, rough, we will use formulas to estimate the sort of size of gem we're going to get, how many carats we're going to get. Carat is a weight, it's one-fifth of a gram. And in nature, it takes uh, many, many hundreds of millions of years for these gems to form. And in order to, for large gems to form, um, many things have to stay constant. So obviously larger gems are rarer. That's why carat weight is important. And lastly, the quality of the cut. We talked about that earlier. Uh, cut releases the beauty, and that's a big factor on, on the value of the gemstone. No published official gemstone pricing guides and, and there are classic reasons for that when you compare that to the diamond industry and the gold industry. Gold is a single product. Um, it has very set ratios of quality and it's very easy to compare apples with apples. It, you know, it's either 24 carat, 18 carat, how clean is it, how, how many impurities. It's easy to price that on the world market. There's a bourse for gold. Gold can be um, bought and sold without actually physically holding it. Diamonds, uh, again, um, you are comparing one diamond with another. It's very straightforward. Um, clarity, colour, uh, carat weight, and there is a, a, a very established diamond price industry out there. Gems, coloured gems are very different. Um, for a start, there are very many different types of coloured gems. They are all graded in a relative fashion. For example, emerald is always full of inclusions. You can't compare an emerald to a tanzanite or a sarvarite, for example because they're graded differently. Lastly, it's a very dynamic market, whereas the diamond market is very, has a single channel of distribution. The gem market is completely demand supply driven. Uh, there are many different players in the game and different ways of marketing gems. That very much impacts on the price. So no, there are, unfortunately, there isn't an easy way of pricing gems. Gem, pricing gems is all about knowledge, as I mentioned earlier, knowledge and experience, uh, and your relationship with the channel of distribution. It has always been that way. Um, success in this industry has all been about building relationships and building your way up that channel of distribution towards the end of the channel. So unfortunately, no, uh, there is no easy way for an artisanal miner to, to do that. The process for exporting gems is quite cumbersome and complex here, um, based on the Mining Act. So initially you need a mineral dealer's or, mi or, or miner's um, export permit in, in, uh, license initially in order to be able to even begin the process. The first step is to photograph, uh, well, the, the, is to process the paperwork requesting a, an export permit from the Ministry of Mining. Then the gems or jewellery must be taken down to Medini House in town where they're photographed, weighed and tested, and to be checked that they are what you say they are. These are then sent up to the Cabinet Secretary in uh, Upper Hill for his office to formally approve the export. That's a requirement under the Act. Once that's been approved, the Ministry uh, will then allow you to proceed to the airport, to Customs, 
where you sit with a warden of mines, he's a geologist, and the uh, goods are then sealed in a metal box with a padlock and a, a, a wax seal from the Ministry of Mining, and all the paperwork, a customs entry is, is, is processed, and the mines export papers are stamped. Those goods are then released, at that point you're no longer able to touch them, and they're released to your shipping agent, whoever that may be, and that evening they're seen on board by a customs officer, and the final stamp is put on the paperwork and entered into the uh, custom system online. Uh, that, those goods are then able to leave the country and go on to their final destination. At that point, a royalty is paid to the government uh, based on the value of the export, and that royalty will essentially go back to the mining area from which those goods came um, under a, a sharing agreement under the Mining Act between the central government and the counties. The marketing of colored gemstones has multiple channels. It depends whether you're marketing to the end consumer or business to business. What level of the value chain are you marketing to? So, for example, the Rare Gemstone Company, we market to high-end jewelers and designers in the USA. So we're selling to a jeweler, to a retail jeweler, who will then sell on to a retail customer. In order to sell on uh, to the retail customer, um, a massive amount of trust has to be established, which is why a retail jeweler on the ground speaking to that customer is the best person to do that. It's very, very difficult to market direct to an end consumer outside of, of the country, I would say. However, having said that, obviously today there are many, many channels an artisanal miner might take um, in order to market himself. Uh, for example, you've got Instagram, you've got Pinterest, Facebook, these are all channels which are free, which allow you to market to an end consumer, whether it's within Kenya or abroad. Your big challenge will always be establishing a level of trust because a buyer within the UK, within the USA, is protected by his own country's laws. Uh, if a retailer cheats that buyer, he is, uh, he's accountable uh, on the Trade Descriptions Acts of those countries. Whereas a buyer buying from outside of that country, he is not protected in the same way. So we're still restricted massively by these global problems um, in place. But having said that, an artisanal miner can look to build up his own uh, direct marketing channel in that, in that manner over time. Initially, though, he would be looking to market to the next step in the chain, for example, a company like ourselves. Um, the restriction would mainly come from the fact that we only deal in the top 1%, whereas a miner's going to be mining a large percentage of goods that we don't buy. Where does he market those? Prior to 2000, uh, Kenya had a very strong dealer's market, cutting market here in Nairobi. That all ended in 2000 when Tanzania opened up, Tanzania being the premier producer of gems in the region at that time. And many cutters and dealers left Kenya and went to Tanzania. That's still the case. Um, there are very few cutters and dealers left in Kenya, and as a result, artisanal miners have a small market of, of their own companies within Kenya to market to. My advice to the government, and has been through many channels, is to really invest time in making it, in building up the dealer and cutting value addition market within Kenya, because that kills two birds with one stone. An artisanal miner will, there, will therefore again, as he did prior to 2000, have an established market within his own country to sell his goods. More competition means better prices for artisanal miners. The more, more companies there are bidding for those goods, the better price the miner gets, as opposed to brokers within Taita, for example, uh, single sourcing, which allows the broker to exploit possibly um, the miner in, the, in that way. A miner should be looking to move up the, uh, the value chain as much as he can. Kenya is yet to redevelop its dealers and value addition industry, which will give power and introduce competition in gemstones mining. A competitive market plays to the advantage of the artisanal and small-scale miners who lack market and gemstone valuation knowledge and therefore are more likely to be exploited by middlemen who pay them a pittance far from the market value. Redeveloping and strengthening the gemstones business ecosystems in Kenya is critical for a more sustainable gemstone mining future. 
To address the gemstone cutting valuation and marketing challenges the ASM face, the Voy Gemstone Cutting and Value Addition Center has been set up by the government of Kenya in Voy Town in Taitetaveta County. The miners are hopeful that the center will be of benefit to them. Although the center is yet to be officially open, the Voy Gem Center plays a critical role in gemstone licensing, gemstone valuation, value addition and connecting the miners to the markets. The issue of linking miners to and their products to the international market is very important. And uh, that is part of the reason why the Gem Center was established. We have a pool of international buyers uh, from America, from the UK, from Germany, from, from the Asian countries, from China. And these buyers we have, we, we have a close contact with them. So what we are doing at the center, we are developing a portal where we can link these people, the buyers. The buyers can interact with the, with the primary producer online and it be an interactive uh, portal where they can communicate so that um, the buyers and the primary producers can communicate and they can begin on the price of the stone and they do everything uh, transparently without any problem. So that is one of the reasons why the gym center has been established. And also, most of the international buyers, they come, they come around. But the reason they, when they come to a place like the gym center, where they can sit at the comfort of good security and the government is seeing what they're doing, then they buy whatever they're buying comfortably, and then also we provide for them security. Once they buy stones, they don't have to go with the stones. We send the stones direct to the airport, then they just pay and go. Then they, the stone is exported and they meet the stone wherever they are going. So this will reduce cases of insecurity where we have someone being attacked because they have stones. Because some of these stones are very expensive and uh, they're worth a lot of money. So it's important that uh, this conversation happens in a place where everybody is feeling comfortable with the security and, uh, and uh, everything is fine. On the issue of uh, mining Kadasta, I can say that uh, the government has put up this uh, online portal to assist in licensing. We have got different type of licenses. So the mining cadastre, you can apply for a mining license. You can apply for, mm. you can apply for mining permit, or a no mining permit. You can also apply for dealers, mineral dealers or trading license, or mineral dealers permit. And also we have got a trading, we have got a license for value addition that is coming up. So all this you can do through the online portal. What you need to do is just to register on the system. Once you're registered, you can apply using your account. And you don't have to go to Nairobi. You do it here. You can say the, the if it's a mining license or permit, you can say the, the areas you are vacant. You just input your coordinates and, uh, and, the, and, and, the, and the cadastro will tell you if that area is free or not. If it's not free, it will tell you to apply for a different area. If it's free, it will prompt you to continue the application. So this has made it very easy and uh, you can apply from anywhere, even if you are out of this country, so long as you know you have the coordinates of the area that you want to apply for. So that's a big step in ensuring that uh, mining goes on well. And also the licenses don't take, don't take long to be processed. Once you, in, you, in, you upload the necessary uh, documents in the license is processed, there are, there's a schedule of the different uh, number of days that takes for different licenses and permits. We, we would like also to do a civic education to our uh, people in Kenya uh, to know how these gemstones are used uh, because mostly they are used as bad stones and lucky stones. And uh, they, they are like, they are stones for January, February, March, until December. Like for instance, July, we have ruby for July, we have turquoise for December, blue turquoise, 
and uh, like that. We also have Amadis for February. So we have bath stones. And if you teach our people how to, 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 to do with these stones, eh, then they will not be wearing synthetics, which are equally same, almost of the same value, yeah, with a genuine one. So they, it's better for them to come to the Jameson Value Edition Center to buy uh, what we have mined locally instead of buying synthetics from China and elsewhere. The ASM continues to face a myriad of social, economic, environmental, technological and governance barriers which limit the sector's development. Although the government has made efforts to formalize the ASM sector through the Mining Act 2016, majority of ASMs cannot afford to get proper licensing, develop their mines and access proper equipment and knowledge to apply modern mining techniques. Uh, Eh, mtu kama atsino maina na pitia changa moto nyingi jambo la kwanza ni kukosa mtaji wa kutosha pili fifaa tunavyo tumia ni fifaa duni au unapata kazi ambao labda tukutumia mashine tungefanya kwa mwezi mmoja kwetu inaweza kutuchukua hata mwaka na hilo jambo ndio limechangia sana pakubwa madini ya siwe ya kipatikana kwa wingi vile inavyo stahili kwa sababu unapoangalia zile vyombo tunavyotumia ni vifanduni ambavyo tunachukua muda mrefu na pia tumekosa msaada kutoka kwa maidara ya madini ya uh, mainao sika na madini kiasi ya kwamba serikali ingeegeza kwa hii idara na kusaidia hivi vikundi at least tungekuwa tumefaidika na tungekuwa tuko msari wa mbele Inji yetu imebarikiwa na, ma, na madini, madini mengi, aina tofauti tofauti, na yanapatikana. Lakini yasa unapata ule uchimbaji, umekuwa mgumu kwa ukosa FIFA. Uh, Jamole lingine pia, ni kwamba serikali na viongozi wetu, wangekeza kwa hii sekta ya madini, ingeweza kusaidia sana kwa sababu jambola kwanza, ninabuni ya jira, vijana wengu wangepata kazi kwa upando wa madini na wangeweza kujitegemea maana sasa unapoona unapotembea huko unapata vijana wengi hawako kazini na sasa wote serikali tu unasikia kipiga nduru akisema wanatafuta vile vijana watapata hajira hilo ni jambo moja kwamba ambao wakiangazia upande wa madini vijana wengi watasaidika the development of the ASM subsector necessitates that some provisions in the mining act 2016 become fully operationalized such as the gazettement of artisanal mining committees to enable the commencement of the licensing of artisanal miners at county levels artisanal miners have for a long time mined informally as a response to the complex and bureaucratic nature of mining licensing processes the activation of the mining cadastry will help address some of the licensing challenges they have faced in the past. The miners and mining stakeholders do not solely expect the government to solve the grand challenges in the ASM sector. All state and non-state actors have a role to play in developing a more vibrant and successful industry. To this end, in November 2019, mining stakeholders in Taita Taveta, who include artisanal and small-scale miners and entrepreneurs, mining business associations, national and county governments, political leaders, regulatory bodies, local NGOs and community-based organizations, convened under the auspices of the Sustainable Artisanal and Small-Scale Mining Project, or SUST ASM, to re-image and co-create a more sustainable mining future in the county. The Sustasum project is a one-and-a-half-year project funded by the Global Challenges Research Fund in the UK and delivered by a multidisciplinary team of academics and practitioners from the University of Nottingham, UK, Taita Taveta University, Kenya, and New Vic Theatre, UK. Through a series of participatory cultural animation workshops and multi-stakeholder dialogue forums, MSDF, the project is promoting dialogue, networking and cooperation among mining stakeholders. The mining stakeholders have come together to discuss the negative environmental, social and economic impacts of their existing mining practices and to exchange ideas and best practices towards a more inclusive, responsible ASM subsector. For me, it has been a very different way of looking at issues in a very different uh, perspective rather than the one we have also always been used to of being given direct instructions 
Uh, for me, it has been uh, a pleasure attending this. It has opened my mind to a wider uh, body of knowledge. And what I've discovered through the engagement with the stakeholders is that basically all miners, we have the same problems, only that the approach is different in many issues. What I've also learned is that it is important for us to have unity of purpose and to network even more. Uh, for the university, the Nottingham University and Taita Taveta University, we are grateful for the opportunity. And the message that I'm going to take out to, the, out to there to my fellow miners is that despite all our challenges, most of our solutions are local. There is nothing that has come up through the engagement that has shown that our problems are so much uh, external, but basically most of them are local and we have the power and the ability to change the mining situation, especially for the small scale miners and the axinal miners into a better future. I'm very grateful for all the, the host organizations and also for interacting with my fellow miners and other stakeholders from the national government and the county government. Thank you very much. So the Sisters in Project has fostered an environment for mining stakeholders in Taitata Veta to come together and to co-create bottom-up context-specific uh, solutions that mitigate the negative environmental, social, and economic impact of mining. The project is having quite some great impact. We established a multi-stakeholder dialogue forum, and this is a, a platform that is promoting dialogue, collaboration, and partnerships among gemstone mining stakeholders. Certainly, we see new, you know, very strong and different mining stakeholder relationships that continue to be forged. With the participatory methods that we used uh, in this project, we see that it is contributing to giving voice and agency to artisanal miners. Some of these uh, miners felt quite marginalized uh, by the previous local governance and decision-making processes. They are now part of designing solutions to their local challenges as evident in the Sustainable Mining Five-Year Action Plan. So overall, we have seen the emergence of new and different sustainability conversations. These are changing mining stakeholders' perceptions and behaviors towards a more accountable and responsible gemstone, artisanal, and small-scale mining in Taita Taveta. There is a sense of collective action that is emerging in the county. Together, the mining actors have co-developed the Taita Taveta Sustainable Mining Action Plan 2021-2025 to be implemented by all mining stakeholders in Taita Taveta under the leadership of the Multi-Stakeholder Dialogues Forum Secretariat. The Secretariat brings together key actors in the national and county governments, academia and the miners association. It is envisaged that the action plan will improve the mining practices and in the long term contribute to the socio-economic development of Taita Taveta County. A more responsible and sustainable mining sector will directly improve the quality of the lives of miners and the mining communities. Education is important for the future of sustainable mining. Through the support of the faculty at the International Center for Corporate Social Responsibility at the Nottingham University Business School, the Sustasum project is influencing the redesign of the mining education by integrating sustainability in the mining curriculum offered at Taita Taveta University. Taita Taveta University has, over the years, played a very critical role in developing capacity for the mining industry by offering training in mining and mineral processing engineering at the degree level. The university also offers uh, training for capacity development to the artisanal and small-scale miners 
through short courses covering such topics as prospecting, mining, mineral processing, gemology, gem cutting and polishing, and through sensitization of these uh, miners on the provisions of the Mining Act of 2016. Uh, this act replaced the Mining Act of 1940, that is nearly 76 years later. Through this project, we have been able to embed sustainability concepts and practices into the curriculum of the Bachelor of Science in Mining and Mineral Processing Engineering program. As we speak, uh, a new uh, module or uh, course is being developed uh, with the title of Sustainability in Mining and will uh, be ready for the current first year cohort. Uh, we believe that uh, more sustainable mining education develops sustainability competencies and values uh, that would be useful uh, for the workforce that would be better in serving the mining sector, the county of Taita Taveta, and more generally Kenya and the region as a whole.